All right, the Batman nymph is an awesome dark version of a prince nymph. We're gonna put a, our own little twist on it. And at the end of the video, I have a little hack to tie the wings in that you've gotta see. Makes for a very, very clean fly, so check it out. Okay, this is the uh, Batman nymph. This is a fly that's kind of a takeoff on a Prince nymph. It's tied in a dark variation. And uh, I used to work at a shop here in the valley that uh, couldn't keep them in stock when they first came in, uh, in, in stock. So anyway, a uh, very popular fly. And we're going to tie it a little bit heavier than the normal because we like a little bit of weight on our nymphs. This one's going to be in a size 10, but I think we have them from size 10 all the way to 18. Uh, I've got a TMCO 3761 in the vise because it's a little bit longer than a normal nymph hook and a 4 mil bead. Um, you can use whatever nymph hook you want, even a dry fly hook. The hook doesn't matter too much on this one. I'm going to take some wire, some lead wire. This is 020 lead wire. And that's 13 wraps, right, Spence? Who knows how many wraps that was? Comment below. How many wraps was that? So I like to put some lead wire on there, mostly just to kind of uh, mash up under the bead. And if you could see what I was doing, I was just smoothing out that back end. There was a little tag piece that was sticking up and I didn't want that there. Um, the lead also helps me taper the body on this fly. So I'm just gonna start with some thin black thread. Use whatever brand you like. And we're going to tie on some tails. So the tail on this fly is brown and the wing is black. So I'm just going to take normal goose biots and I like to lay them back to back. So when I'm holding those they're going to sit just like this. So if I do that properly I should be able to lay that kind of how I want them to sit pinch them with my left hand and just kind of do a loose wrap and then cinch them into place and that will make a, almost a perfect prince nymph type tail and then I'm just going to come up and wrap forward up to my lead and then I'm going to get rid of this stuff alright now this fly really depends on some taper so um, I want it to have a nice kind of slender taper and the best way to do that is to build that into the fly but before I do that I'm gonna take my wire tie it in it's just, just like brassy or 0 0.2 mil um, blue thread blue wire of some sort doesn't really matter what you use okay for this one um, to build the taper if I used my 70 denier thread um, it would take a long time so I have some 210 denier spooled up and I'm just going to cover up the lead with that as my thinner thread hangs off the back this is an unnecessary step I mean I'm trying to tie a super clean fly here for for the for the instas for the YouTube so that's how that's how I'm going to do it for this video. Um, it does make for a super clean fly, so go ahead and try it out. I'll just whip finish that off, cut it, and now the body on this is just going to be UV black eye stub. This kind of has a purplish or bluish tinge to it. And what I'm going to do is a rope dub technique. So I'll just take some of this eye stub and I'll start. Uh, making it a little bit thinner where the fly is and as I go down my thread I'm going to make it a little bit thicker you'll see why in just a second alright if you can see that's not very slick so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this up a bit and to do that we're going to close off a loop with our thread 
and I'm going to take this smaller thread all the way up to the eye and I'll just grab my trusty dubbing twister and I'm going to twist up that noodle so as you can see now that's nice and slim okay once I have that I'm going to throw a little half hitch I should have done this beforehand I'm going to throw a little half hitch in my thread so it doesn't unravel now I can go ahead and wrap this body so I'm just I like to do it rotary style it just gives me a little bit better control and that noodle should provide a nice little taper see how that tapers up it's still kind of buggy and messy well, that's just fine so I'll tie that loop off and now what I can do is I can come in here and give it a little bit of a trim so the original fly had a really slender body I like a little tiny bit of bug to it and with the way that we did that dubbing there are little micro segmentations in it then I'm going to take my my wire and I'm going to wrap that the opposite way and you'll see how cool that that blue looks with this black eye stub so when I tie that wire off I catch it with my thread and then I bend it against itself just very gently to create a crease and if I do that I can very easily helicopter that off just with a, a turn or two all right now is where this fly gets fun there's a lot going on at the head of this fly the original fly calls for a hen hackle for a collar I'm actually going to use CDC instead I, I really like uh, a CDC prints and so we'll give that a try so I've got this uh, cool feather prepper from hairline it's just like a, an angular shaped foam where you can take a CDC feather and just mash it down in there and with this feather prepper I don't need the best CDC in the world because I can just take two feathers and I can mash them down into the little holding spot and that gets the CDC ready for me to use my fancy Swiss clamp alright so I'll take my Swiss clamp and I'll just come in here and I'll grab that CDC when I pull that out it looks like that so I'll just take my scissors and I'll cut the stems out now we have a full video on how to use the Swiss CDC clamp um, we'll, we'll put a link in this video um, but that that video will show you this technique that I just did with this uh, little feather prepper anyway from here I'm going to make a, a uh, dubbing loop see how open that is if I just leave it so I'm going to take my thread around the back of that loop and close it off and I don't want to build up much bulk at the head so I'm just being careful with my thread wraps okay so I'm going to take my uh, little dubbing twister take my CDC dubbing loop and I'm just going to stick that in so that it lines up right behind the bead and then I'll just twist that all up to make a little CDC hackle so once I'm here obviously just wrap that in there I love it how it looks so buggy and kind of unruly good for nymphs alright so I'll trim that off of there I'm going to pull all these fibers back and then for the wings I actually like to trim the top of this fly alright so for the top this fly has black wings I told you that there's a little hack when I tie these in that I'll show you All right. so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay those right on top of each other line them up they're both facing the same direction just like that so that's two feathers it looks like one and I'm just gonna kinda put that in so that it touches the very back of the body and I'll just hold that in with my left thumb and tie that in with a few snug-ish wraps 
And now back here, sometimes these little bad parts like to stick together, so I just cut those off. And then I just need to separate them. All right, so those are slightly separated. Sorry, I'm all fingers right now, but I'm just gonna take those and I'm gonna split them apart. Standard Prince Nymph style. All right, so that's about how I want them to sit off the back of the fly. Now, getting a clean head with thread and the biots going over the head is kind of a challenge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold these back on top of themselves and then I'm going to take my thread and just barely come over that edge so I'm just going to kind of create a crease over the top of that fold okay so once I have this here I'm going to find the thinner or the the more translucent side of the biot I'm going to stick my scissors in and I'm just going to start a little tear and if I do that, I can just rip that biot right along that thread line and it just breaks off. Do that with the other one. All right. So you know, that takes a little bit of practice, but as you can see, it's a really clean tie-in point where those wings are. Some biots are stronger than others. Um, these biots actually happen to be a lot stronger than the Prince Nymph biots I'm playing with today too. So one last step for this fly. Um, I think they use centipede legs in the original pattern. I've got these, uh, what are they called? Barred blue and purple foil Senyo fusion legs and they look really cool on this fly. So I'm just gonna tie on one side of the head and then flip it over and do the other side. And I'm gonna trim those legs to be roughly the same length as the wings in the back and in the front just a little bit shorter just like that so it should sit kind of like that and then because it's kind of bulky I'm just gonna throw a hand whip finish in here um, just remember whenever you do a hand whip finish you gotta put cement on it because it will come undone anyway this is the Batman nymph uh, we tied it pretty heavy you could use it on a euro rig it's a good dropper pattern Works well when there's stone flies out, but just kind of as a general attractor anyway. But anyway, tie some up, have some fun with them. It's a really cool fly.